speaking with uh, Nettie Smith today about rhythm in music. Hello. Hi. I think everybody knows me by now. <laughs> you know? <laughs> I'm a musician. Oh, by the way, let me get some water because I know once I start talking, then I'm going to go dry. Mm. Thanks, Anne. Yes. Thanks for inviting so, me. So, so to... happy to have you on your show. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's it's quite a unique um, unique concept, though, you know. Oh, absolutely. To yeah. have artists talking about themselves and talking about their craft, mm -hmm. but specifically focusing on one theme. Yes. You know, because trust me, we can run all over the place. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, yeah, all the time. <laughs> Tangents. Oh, right. most, most That's time. what editing's for. <laughs> I, I, I don't like to edit. I like to <laughs> modify mm -hmm. and recreate something from that. Okay. You know, because I'm just this kind of a loose guy. I'm, I'm a creative person. So should I start with the questions now? Oh, okay, all right, <laughs> all right. <laughs> You just want to start me, huh? Okay, go on. Um, so how do you define rhythm? Is it a noun or a verb? Well, theoretically, from a dictionary point of view, it's a noun. But for me, it's a verb. Because it's, it's an action, it's the function that I, I, I um, focus on primarily. Yes, it's nice to have a... Um, a dictionary meaning mm -hmm. that everybody goes by, you know, and say, okay, the word, the word um, rhythm is a noun. That's beautiful. But I look for the musicality. The moment you mention rhythm, I'm beginning to feel something unique moving in me. Because number one, I started to feel my heart beating. You know, the beat of my heart. I want to personalize what I feel. Not just the words on a piece of paper that says, okay, it's a noun. For me, it's the verb. Just like the verb in a, in a regular sentence, you know. Mm -hmm. I use that in music. Action. Mm -hmm. You know, for me, it's that action. When I look at, um, when I look at what, a, what a drummer does, when I look at the, the guitar player, when I look at the keyboard player, but and everybody is synchronized playing, you know, yeah, and they're functioning in that rhythm. But mm -hmm. the fundamental thing is the beat. Mm -hmm. the, uh, one of the things that um, many people seem to miss is that the beat comes first. And the beat is that steady, like a heartbeat. And once you have established the beat, now you have to determine time. So what's the tempo? Is it going to be slow or is it going to be fast? But nonetheless, it's a steady beat. The other thing about rhythm is once you establish the beat, the pulse that you're working with, whether it's fast or slow, now you have to think about, okay, what's the duration? How is it going to be determined that you're playing on the meter? See that word meter? Mm -hmm. That word meter determines the accent. And that accent really tells you about, OK, now I know that he's playing in 4-4, four, 3-4. Four, if I just do the beat, nobody really knows if it's 2-2, two, 4-4, two, four, four, or 6-8. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Nobody knows. Mm -hmm. So once the meter is established, mm -hmm. remember, you've got the beat now, yeah. bum, 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 straight. Yeah. And now you have this meter that says, where the accent is. You know exactly now where the downbeat is going to be. 
So does that <clears throat> come from writing music, or is this when you're just together with a bunch of musicians playing, or is this part of the creative process, or you're just explaining the basic elements of rhythm to you as a musician? Well, rhythm is an element of music. The properties of rhythm is where you find these nuances, mm -hmm. these other things, you know? To help create. To help create mm -hmm. the flow. So if I, let's say I'm talking about uh, a straight beat, right? Now I'm going to put a syncopation on it, right? So from the straight beat, now we establish the pulse. Now if I say, I'm swinging now. You know, but what if I start beating like this? That's the rhythm, mm -hmm. but that's the beat. I see. Uh -huh. You see? Right. So we know the beat now, and then. Ah. Uh, nice. Yeah. You know, and that's that's how you find. That's why I like drummers because uh -huh. they're crazy. <laughs> you know, they're maintaining. Right. You know, a, yeah, a, a beat lot, and, their and they're, play, they're right. playing with their left hand, yeah. right? Uh -huh. Yeah, it's a lot of coordination. These guys are crazy. That's yeah, amazing. But they're, you know, there's this one gentleman, his name is Bernard Purdy. Believe it or not, he played on most of the Beatles' record. But everybody thought it was like, you know, um, Ringo. It was it was yeah. Bernard Birdie that was played on uh -huh. maybe sixty percent. Uh huh. Wow. You know, that's a lot. Or or, or more. Uh huh. But back in the day, back in the day, they needed a drummer. Drummer. Yeah, they needed yeah, just four of them up there. And, but that was his job. That's his job. So would he be behind stage while they're performing, or was no, this in the added studio. to the? This was yeah, just right. Their the studio. Yeah. Wow. Cool. Because magic happens in the studio. I'll give you a good example. I had a young man that came Sounds into like this. Sounds like contrived magic with the Beatles. Indeed. <laughs> I'll give you a good example of um, how it is when you're creating in the studio. I had a drummer came to my, my session, hired this gentleman, and um, for some reason, I wasn't feeling what he was playing. And I, I said to him, could you just make it simple? Just give me boom, ba, 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 and I'd be satisfied. He couldn't, he was not steady. Sadly, I went out and got a drum machine. To me, that was the saddest, saddest day to get a drum machine because I wanted a live drummer, mm -hmm. but he was not just, yeah. on the pulse, mm -hmm. you know? He could not feel what the music was all about. So once I got the, the drum machine, the session went boom, that's smooth. And then what I did. So that added the necessary rhythm. It had the background. It, absolutely. To then do what else you needed to do. Whatever else was needed. Mm -hmm. And then I got a, a drummer in later. Uh -huh. You know, but the session had to go. Yeah. So the important thing is rhythm. Mm -hmm. Doesn't matter what genre you're in, doesn't matter what you're doing, it's that rhythm that makes it happen. Look at a baby, for example. That baby just come out of the womb, but that baby can dance, that baby can move. And that baby, it's oh, free. it's so cute. Uh -huh. it's so natural. Yeah, it's natural. You know, mm -hmm. where did that child learn it from? It's just inside of him or her. So we all have that heartbeat. Mm -hmm. One of the things about, that I admire about the, um, the, the uh, the different cultures, especially the Rastafarians in Jamaica, they play this this beat that I always feel, you know, because they play it because, uh, due to the heartbeat. Mm -hmm. See, mm -hmm. and they would. <clears throat> so to me, I personalize yeah, it's, it's the beat first before. I play an instrument. I don't just go on an instrument. I have to feel it. I have to walk around in the house until my wife just said, 
You're doing the same thing again? <laughs> you know? <laughs> so I've been going for hours, sometimes days, working on this same rhythm. Right now, I'm working on, on, a, on, a, on a rhythm that I want to put some lyrics on. But if the, the rhythm is not right, whatever words I use, it's not going to come out right. So, so what you, in your house, what are you doing? Like tapping as you walk yeah, around? Yeah, I'll, I'll, do, I'll do this, or I'll do da 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 no nonsense no nonsense no word, uh -huh. you know, that, right? I'll just, I'm just da, imagining da, 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 it's to your wife's eyes. <laughs> oh, yeah. I go in, How long have you been married? <laughs> too long. <laughs> Till she just gives up. She gives up. Oh, yeah, that's, that's so you know, sweet. So she's my heart. Does she understand? Oh yeah. yeah. If she didn't understand me by now, she would never Did understand. You do it in the shower too. Now? Oh, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Even this morning, because one of the things I try to do with, before I do a performance, for example, before I do a performance, I have to start feeling something. I would probably go to Ella Fitzgerald if I'm going to do a jazz gig. Mm -hmm. If I'm going to do a reggae gig, I might go to Bob Marley. You know, and listen, but I wouldn't listen to my stuff. I would listen to somebody else's yeah, stuff. Yeah, right. Inspiration. You know? And if I'm gonna do um, a funk gig, I would listen to James Brown. You know, mm -hmm. so they are influencers. It's similar in my with life. writing, because you read the work of, or at least I do, read the work of someone else before I'll start to write something. Sometimes in the morning, just to sort of get my mind working in that way. It's like a similar, similar approach. It's, I think it is, because you as a writer, we'll talk about that in the next yeah, I'm sorry episode. To cut into no. yours. No, but it's a similar, but it's a sort similar. Of preparation. Yeah. And I find that also when I write, that's what I do. I read a lot. I read till I fall asleep. You know? But when we when we really get to know our craft. I mean, I, I, I wrote a book, but I didn't write it because I wanted to write a lot of words. I wanted to write it because there was a piece of music I was creating. I create this piece of music, and then it began to grow, grow, grow. See? But it was the rhythm in that piece of music mm -hmm. that drove me beyond the boundaries of a two and a half minute song. Mm -hmm. Why am I feeling this? Why? Why is it? And then a character began to develop. Interesting. And the characters start to play in my head. So at 3 o'clock in the morning, I would be in the basement studio, and my wife would say, who are you talking to? So I'm talking to things, because I want to make sure the rhythm of the character is what I'm feeling. I'm not forcing myself mm -hmm. on the character. And the day I tried to force myself, my, my rhythm, in the way she was speaking, is the day I could not write anymore. You, have to you had to channel her voice. I had to channel. And you started, since you're a musician, you started with the beats with the, and absolutely. With creating the rhythm. Absolutely. That's interesting. You know? Uh huh. So that to I'm me. Why you don't do the beats while you're going to bed next to your wife? Because she'd oh. be like up all night. If I'm in a, if I'm in a Unless restaurant. Unless it's a book. <laughs> you're just silently reading. If I'm in a restaurant and nothing is happening, my hand is on my my Got knee or my leg. What if music's being piped in? Doesn't matter. No, you're still. I'm that still, isn't enough. No. No. You're I'm really, finding always something. Always creating rhythm. Yeah. I tell you, a good example of that, I went to the dentist, and I mean, I was in pain. The dentist saw me looking at the wall. He had a painting on the wall. The painting had mountains, really nice painting. And he saw me doing this. He came in and said, I thought you were in pain. Oh, I said, no, the painting, I'm, I'm extrapolating from the painting. It's rhythm. And it's a good distraction for you. Totally. Yeah. So he said, you, you hadn't even spoken one word about your tooth, uh -huh. but you're talking about rhythm from painting. That's so sweet. I say yes. And he said, how did you do that? And I tried to explain to him. Mm -hmm. And then he said, why don't you leave? Um, I think the painting's gone now. <laughs> <laughs> but the beauty about rhythm, it's everywhere. Uh -huh. Everywhere 
you look, you know. I see rhythm in the way the books are lined up. I see rhythm from the, 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 uh, the, the posters on the wall. That's what I see. It's abstract, but it's also visual. Mm -hmm. So when I look at the visual, I'm seeing things that you might not see. Mm -hmm. I look at someone walking, I look at someone talking. So do you feel like you need to create order? Is this something that you started doing as a child, like maybe when you were afraid, you would use this as a way to kind of create order in your thinking or order in what was going on? <laughs> or is it, did it come from a, like a happier place, like not being afraid, just sort of the way you see things? The way you're... I think it's the way I see things more than bringing order because I think I was always a disordered child, you know? I disobeyed every rule that there were. And this was in Jamaica? In Jamaica. Growing up in Jamaica, my in mom... Kingston? No, Montego Bay. Montego Bay. My mom said, don't make any noise. I'll go out and make noise. <laughs> <laughs> it's hard not to make noise. It's, it's very you know, hard. Kid. You know, the very just beating you. <laughs> no Absolutely. wonder you talk to yourself all the time. You feel loud too. <laughs> uh, honestly, yeah. I, and I said, my grand, my grandson is doing this. He'd be alone playing by himself oh, and sweet. talking to himself. Uh -huh. And I'm watching him. I said, that's me. That's so cute. You know, uh -huh. it, it's 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 something that you don't really know initially, but you find yourself doing some things that makes you feel comfortable, makes mm -hmm. you feel good, makes you feel in order, mm -hmm. you know, even though you it's think you're comfort. doing something disorderly, mm -hmm. you know. My dad knew that I was crazy from the time he, he <laughs> met me, <laughs> because when he asked me to do something, I would always do the opposite, and my wife is a testimony of that right now. She'll testify. He leave things disordered just to get me to say something. She'll tell you that. Uh -huh. You know? Because I want to hear the rhythm. For that, you know. I don't know, is it? <laughs> yes. But anyway, go ahead. Yeah, I don't want to label you. No, I don't know. I just do things. You know? People and it's can, just because you're a musician. I think so, because I operate. I operate primarily on my right side. My left brain side is too orderly for me. Things are too processed. Okay. You know, too linear, mm -hmm. too boring. Okay. You know, I I want to try to create order within your music, but you start with just the beats. Yes. Yes. That's the order. Which is order. Yeah. yeah. That's the and order. And then you. There was a lady from France, her name was Nadia de Blanche. And if I quote her right, she says, if you want to learn, if you want to, yeah, if you want to learn music, don't let me misquote her. But in essence, what she's saying, study music mm -hmm. if you want to learn it, study it. Mm -hmm. And if you want to create music, Forget the rules. Mm -hmm. Study the rules yes. to and learn mu right. music. They say that with drawing too. They you say that with drawing. To, you know how you have to know how to draw yeah. essentially before you can go abstract, because the images have to people have to be able to pick up what it is. I mean, unless depending, but you're supposed to learn how to draw before you go abstract. If that makes sense. It makes sense. It's the same thing. You know, I'm one of those frustrated you know, the hand drawing person, because <laughs> I take classes in art, but I just draw, you know? May I ask you another question? Please do. Okay. What does research tell us about rhythm in music and its effect on people?